morning, everyone, and welcome to our morning Eucharist here at St. John Baptist Birkswell. We're in the third Sunday of Lent, so uh, it could be said that we are in deepest Lent uh, at the moment. Uh, it gives me very great pleasure this week to welcome, uh, virtually at least, the Bishop of Warwick, who has produced a sermon for the diocese and he will be focusing very much on the theme of spiritual complacency. We need to ask ourselves whether we are spiritually complacent, a good question to ask during this season of Lent. And we'll be focusing in our, he'll be focusing in his sermon on that rather disturbing episode from the Gospels, the Gospel of John, where Jesus drives out the moneylenders from the temple. So as we continue with our service in this season of Lent, let us be quiet for a moment. The Lord be with you, and also with you. We now have our first hymn, which is Praise the Lord, ye heavens adore him. We continue in prayer with our prayer of preparation. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, the first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. The sacrifice of God is a broken spirit, 
A broken and contrite heart God will not despise. Let us come to the Lord, who is full of compassion, and acknowledge our transgressions in penitence and faith. Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been, help us to amend what we are, and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. May Almighty God have mercy upon you, forgive your sins, and bring you to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. The Collect for the Third Sunday of Lent Almighty God, whose most dear Son went up not to joy, but first he suffered pain, and entered not into glory before he was crucified. Mercifully grant that we, walking in the way of the cross, may find it none other than the way of life and peace. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We now have our first two readings, and these will be followed by the anthem, Teach Me, O Lord. The first reading is taken from the book of Exodus, chapter 20, starting at verse 1. Then God spoke all these words. I am the Lord your God, who brought you out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of slavery. You shall have no other gods before me. You shall not make for yourself an idol, whether in the form of anything that is in heaven above or that is in the earth beneath or that is in the water under the earth. You shall not bow down to them or worship them. For I, the Lord, your God, am a jealous God, punishing children for the iniquity of parents to the third and fourth generation of those who reject me, but showing steadfast love to the thousandth generation of those who love me and keep my commandments. You shall not make wrongful use of the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not acquit anyone who misuses his name. Remember the Sabbath day and keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work. But the seventh day is a Sabbath to the Lord your God. You shall not do any work. You, your son or your daughter, your male or female slave, your livestock, or the alien resident in your towns. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, but rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and consecrated it. Honor your father and mother, so that your days may be long in the land that the Lord your God is giving you. You shall not murder, you shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness against your neighbor. You shall not covet your, your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or male or female slave or ox or donkey or anything that belongs to your neighbor. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The 
second reading is taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 1, from verses uh, 18 to 25. For the message about the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise and the discernment of the discerning I will thwart. Where is the one who is wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the debater of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world did not know God through wisdom. God decided through the foolishness of our proclamation to save those who believe. For Jews demand signs and Greeks desire wisdom, but we proclaim Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. But to those who are the called, both Jews and Greeks, Christ, the power of God and the wisdom of God. For God's foolishness is wiser than human wisdom, and God's weakness is stronger than human strength. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The, hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. The Passover of the Jews was near, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple he found people selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and the money changers seated at their tables. Making a whip of cords, he drove all of them out of the temple, both the sheep and the cattle. He also poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned the tables. He told those who were selling the doves, take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remembered that it was written, Zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews then said to him, What sign can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews then said, This temple has been under construction for 46 years, and you will raise it up in three days. But he was speaking of the temple of his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered what he had said, and they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. As we prepare to reflect on God's word, let's uh, welcome 
God the Holy Spirit in prayer to uh, prepare us for what God would say. And so, Lord, we pray that you will open our ears to hear what you would say to each of us. That you will soften our hearts, that they might be receptive to your word. And that you will strengthen our wills, that we may trust and live out your word in our lives. And to you be the glory in our lives, in your world, now and forever. Amen. Have you done your spring cleaning yet? Well, I guess at least half of you may have no idea what I'm talking about, spring cleaning. What is that? It was commonly heard a phrase and commonly uh, done uh, in my youth, certainly. I'm not saying by me, but spring cleaning is a, a really thorough cleaning. It's more than what we might do once a week, once a month, however often you clean your regular cleans. It is a really thorough clean in which we, you know, we lift up rugs, we go to the back of the drawer, we, we, we dust more thoroughly. And uh, actually, if someone were to come into your home uh, after you'd started your spring cleaning, your home would look uh, in much more of a mess than before you started. So spring cleaning is a, is a reality. People do it, really thoroughly clean their, our homes. Uh, but it's also a metaphor for getting our house in order. And, and spring and Lent uh, are really a kind of Venn diagram. Spring, Lent, Lent the lengthening of the days, allowing more light in. So uh, Lent is a time when we uh, welcome the light of Christ to, um, we to quote scriptures to, to bring to light things hidden in darkness, to reveal what we need to, to see in order to get our spiritual house in order. And today's gospel is John's account of the cleansing of the temple, the cleansing of the temple. Jesus in righteous anger drives out those selling animals for sacrifice and those uh, changing money. Not because, most scholars agree, of their function. What, what they are doing is in the context of temple worship, worship in the temple at that time, necessary. People need to buy animals for sacrifice and need to change money, uh, money that would be seen as idolatrous because it has the head of the emperor on it for Jewish coinage to offer in the temple. So the functions, it seems, were, were necessary and indeed right. So why is Jesus so angry? Why is he so bold in driving out those selling animals and those changing money? Why does he react so, so fiercely? Well, it seems that the people doing those things were exploiting the poor. They were not honouring God who has a special love for the poor. They were making money out of faithful and often poor uh, Jews who have come as was their duty to the temple at Passover time. So the exploitation of the poor, the turning uh, my father's house, uh, the temple, which is all about the worship of God, into a marketplace or a den of robbers, as uh, Mark puts it in his gospel, has displaced the 
true purpose and meaning of the temple, which is about the worship of God, the worship of God. The temple is a house of prayer for all nations. So we see, I think, in the cleansing of the temple, uh, something of a jealous love of God. What do I mean by that? God loves us so much, loves his people. And it pains God for us, his people, for his people then and now and always to, um, to be drawn away from true worship, worship of God in spirit and in truth. And it is only in that worship, only in that relationship, that wholehearted relationship with God that we uh, will be able to receive, we are able to receive all that God has for us and all that God wants to do in us and, and through us. So uh, the jealous love of God, jealousy uh, in the sense of the passionate love of God. He loves us so much as revealed in the passion of Christ that he, he longs for us to uh, enter into that wholehearted relationship when the people seek me with their whole heart god says through jeremiah then i will be found by them and we are invited we are called uh, we are uh, commanded to love god with all our heart soul mind and strength with everything within us to to love god bless the lord oh my soul let all that is within me bless his holy name so we can't share God as one priority amongst others. C.S. Lewis wrote uh, so succinctly and powerfully, God does not want some of your time, some of your attention. God does not even want all of your time or all of your attention. God wants you. So today's gospel, the cleansing of the temple, I suggest invites us to look into our own hearts, into our own lives and ask ourselves, what is there in my life that I have allowed to distract me from the wholehearted worship of God? What is there in my life that I have allowed given space for in my life, in my priorities, in my doing, that has uh, distracted me, allows me not to uh, give all that I am to God, to worship God uh, with all, all my being. In uh, the letter of James, he uses uh, an interesting word, I think it's only found in James in the Bible, dipsikos, dipsikos, which is double-minded, double-minded. So uh, that means we don't have one focus and one priority, and there is conflict within us. Jesus puts it, you cannot serve two masters. So what, what is there in our own lives that might be preventing us from wholehearted worship of God, from that doorway into, into freedom and joy and peace, and knowing the deeper love of God for us and for the world? Well, we may or may not have allowed Mammon to be uh, one master, you cannot serve two masters, Jesus says, you cannot serve God and mammon. Uh, but we maybe need to check that one out. Are we possessed by our possessions, other things we have materially, or even in terms of um, uh, what the things that matter most to us, which may not be material, they may be status in the world, they may be other gods. Uh, so it may or may not be mammon that conflicts with our love of God, that, that is a kind of shared priority that uh, will not allow us to discover what God has for us. But I guess we're all, in one way or another, guilty of having another master other than Jesus, 
which is self-will. Self-will. In those wonderfully memorable words, the Book of Common Prayer, we have followed too much the devices and desires of our own hearts. Self-will. Uh, and that self-will can be uh, quite a sort of subtle thing. It can seem to us, our will for our life can seem to us uh, a good and healthy will. You know, it's a will for good things. But have we allowed ourselves to actually uh, be saying to ourselves, be living out in our lives, uh, my will be done, and please God bless my will, rather than trusting our lives, thy will, your will be done in my life, Lord God. And another subtle temptation of which we would do well to be aware especially in Lent is spiritual complacency. Uh, actually I don't really have to repent, I, I'm, I'm, I'm a good respectable person, I, I do all this voluntary work, I, I, uh, uh, oh, I'm a vicar, I'm a bishop, um, I don't really need to repent. That is, uh, that's an extreme version of it, but that can subtly uh, occupy our um, sense of self. And uh, it's dangerous. It, it reminds me of the story of a Sunday school teacher who uh, was teaching about uh, the Pharisees and how often they would uh, be very judgmental of Jesus and indeed reject what Jesus was saying. Uh, and then after the, at the end of the session, teaching about the Pharisees, the Sunday school teacher said, and now, now let's pray. And the prayer went, thank you, Lord, that we're not like the Pharisees who are, who are so self-righteous. Well, I guess you can see the, the irony in that. To know our need of God, to know our need of his mercy and forgiveness, is to be spiritually healthy. It's not to be morbid or gloomy. It is to be alive, to know our need of God's mercy. Remember the parable of uh, of the Pharisee and tax collector. Thank you, Lord, I'm not like these people. The Pharisaical attitude of self righteousness and the tax gatherer, the despised tax gatherer, Lord, have mercy on me. Lord, have mercy on me. So that man, Jesus says, went away whole. That man went away right with God. Knowing our need of God is a sign of health. William Temple, uh, acutely aware of the dangers that all of us have of self-deception and that subtle self-righteousness, uh, wrote, everything about me is sin if it is not what God wants it to be. Everything about me is sin if it is not what God wants it to be. So, so really challenging the idea of sin as doing dreadful things that everybody knows about and that is uh, publicly shocking, but sin being, uh, not a, um, so sin being not allowing ourselves to be changed by God, keeping parts of our life to ourself. And so it is with, um, with the saints and Paul sees all Christians, the holy ones, the saints, all of us, um, the, the, the closer we, we come to God, uh, the more we are aware of our need of God's, God's continuing mercy, God's daily mercies, his mercies that are new every morning that is the place to be and if if we're not seeing that if we can't yet see that 
perhaps we could dare, and it is a courageous prayer to pray, but an important one, please, Lord, reveal to me my life, to myself or something, so that, so, so that uh, I, I, I do see my need of your mercy and grace. And that, of course, to be in that place, to see our need of God's mercy and grace, is to be in the place of the greatest hope where God comes to, to meet us in his redeeming and liberating love. And so what is the state of our house before God? What is the state of the temple that each of us is, the temple of the Holy Spirit? What is the state, uh, a further question, an important one we might ask of ourselves corporately? What is the state of the spiritual house? Come to him the living stone, uh, Peter writes, and let yourself be built into a spiritual house. What is the state of our corporate life before God? It's an important question too. What have we allowed in that is that has allowed us uh, or distracted us from uh, God as first and last in our lives? So cleansing the temple, the temple needs to be cleansed. And although it can be, uh, and I guess is, uncomfortable, it's, it's a necessary doorway into joy. Temple needs to be cleansed. We recognize this actually every time we gather to break bread. In that very opening prayer, we recognize that we cannot truly worship God without his cleansing. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Not a bad prayer to pray, not only uh, before uh, worship, or, or, or formal worship, but perhaps to pray, not least in Lent, a good opportunity uh, as we wake up. Lord, cleanse me that I may uh, live my life for you truly, fully, and rediscover your grace and mercy in my life uh, each day. So the journey of cleansing, the journey of Lent, the journey of repentance, the journey of turning into to turning towards the light is truly a journey into joy. I'll close with a prayer. Lord, thank you for your passionate love for each one of us. Help us to discover more and more of that love. And guide us by your spirit to see anything in our own lives that we have put up or, or allowed to uh, distract us from worshipping you, our Lord and Saviour, with all our heart, soul, mind and strength. In you alone is our freedom, our liberty, our salvation. Amen. Thank you very much indeed, Bishop John. We now declare the faith of Christ's Church in the words of the Creed. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. 
On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. <clears throat> We now have our prayers of intercession. In response to my words, God of our lives, make us wise. Can you please reply, make us loving. God of our lives, make us wise, make us loving. Loving God, when will we turn, learn your true wisdom? We pray for the world, suffering because too many people believe that to put themselves first is the only wise way. Suffering, because too many people cannot see the need for justice and the alleviation of want. We pray for leaders and rulers of nations, for those with power and influence in our society, and for ourselves in our daily lives and work. God of our lives, make us wise. Make us loving. We pray for the church, struggling to cling to its essential faith in you in the face of modern skepticism and scorn. Struggling to be a house and people of prayer amidst the claims and clamors of every day. We pray for the church throughout the world, for the congregation here, at St. John Baptist Berkswell, including its online community, and for ourselves in our daily lives and worship. God of our lives, make us wise, make us loving. We pray for humankind searching for meaning and hope in lives clouded by want or suffering or loss. Searching for truth and the right way to live with you, one another, or with themselves. We pray for the sick, and we bring to mind those known especially to us in need of our prayers at this time. We continue to pray for the two cyclists injured on the Meriden Road on Ash Wednesday. And we pray for the bereaved. <coughs> Excuse me. And we lift up to you the family and friends of Bill Court, whose funeral service will take place tomorrow at Kenley lifting up especially Joe, Bob, and Rosalind. And we pray for the anxious, of which there are many in this continuing time of pandemic lockdown. We pray, Lord, for those who perhaps for the first time in their lives have struggled with mental health issues, manifested in a sense of stress at work, or in the sense of being enclosed, ensconced at home. And we pray also for ourselves in our daily lives and spiritual quest. God of our lives, Make us wise, make us loving. In the name of him who came to turn the values of the world upside down and to establish the values of the kingdom of love, 
Jesus Christ, our judge and cleanser. Amen. We now come to the beginning of the liturgy of the Eucharist as we share the peace together. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us access to his grace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us share a sign of peace with those in our homes, in our bubble, and uh, virtually across the ether. We will be using Eucharistic prayer too, and an extended preface for this part of the season of Lent. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right and good to give you thanks and praise, almighty God and everlasting Father, through Jesus Christ, your Son. For in these 40 days you lead us into the desert of repentance, that through a pilgrimage of prayer and discipline we may grow in grace and learn to be your people once again. Through fasting, prayer, and acts of service, you bring us back to your generous heart. Through study of your holy word, you open our eyes to your presence in the world and free our hands to welcome others into the radiant splendor of your love. As we prepare to celebrate the Easter feast with joyful hearts and minds, we bless you for your mercy and join with saints and angels forever praising you and singing... Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Praise to you, Lord Jesus. And 
And so far the calling to mind is death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one into your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of St. John the Baptist and all the saints may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be yours, almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. God's holy gifts for God's holy people. Jesus Christ is holy. Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father. Amen. The bread of compassion to feed a hungry world. The cup of salvation to heal the wounded world. Rank on rank the horse of heaven, 
spreads his vanguard on the way. As the light of night descended from the realms of endless day, that the powers of hell may vanish, as the darkness clears away. At the feet of six wing seraph, cherubim with sleepless eye, veil their faces to the presence, as with ceaseless voice they cry, Hallelujah, 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 Lord Most High. The post-communion prayer for this third Sunday of Lent. Merciful Lord, grant your people grace to withstand the temptations of the world, the flesh, and the devil, and with pure hearts and minds to follow you, the only God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We now have our final hymn, Lord of the Dance. I danced in the morning when the world was begun, and I danced in the moon and the stars and the sun, and I came down from heaven and I danced on the earth, and earthly heaven I had my birth. Dance ever, ever you may be, I am the Lord of the dance, said he, and I'll lead you all wherever you may be, and I'll lead you I danced for the scribe and the Pharisee, but they would not dance and they wouldn't follow me. I danced for the fisherman, for James and John, they came with me and the dance went on. They whipped and they stripped and they hung me on high and left me there on the cross to die. Dance there wherever you may be. I am the Lord of the dance, said he, and I'll lead you all wherever you may be, and I'll lead you all in the dance, said he. I dance on a Friday when the skies turn black. It's hard to dance with the devil on your back. They buried my body and they thought I'd gone. But I am a dancer and I still go on. Dance there wherever you may be. I am the Lord of the dance, said he, and I'll lead you all. They cut me down and I leapt up high. I am the life that will never, never die. I'll live in you if you live in me. I am the Lord of the dance, said he. Dance there wherever you may be. I am the Lord of the dance, said he. And I'll lead you all wherever you may be. And I'll lead you. We have a number of notices, and the first notice uh, relates to Mothering Sunday, 
Uh, next week is the fourth Sunday of Lent, which is Mothering Sunday. And uh, as I hope most of you know by now, Mothering Sunday is one of the two so-called Rose Sundays during the year when uh, priests in churches of a more Catholic uh, disposition wear pink vestments. And indeed, I shall be wearing my pink stole next week. And uh, although we are unable to meet together physically, uh, it might be good if symbolically, for symbolic purposes, you sported a touch of pink in your own homes. And uh, the service will be uh, live streamed as usual from church, but there will be a lot of contributions from children and other people very much on a Mothering Sunday theme. And what we would like you to do um, is to bring, uh, to have a candle uh, at the ready and also perhaps a photograph of somebody who is important to you in a mothering or nurturing capacity, because there will be a point towards the end of the service where I will be leading us all in a prayer for those who have been responsible for mothering us or nurturing us. And remember that I give the term mothering its widest possible construction. So that is Mothering Sunday next week. Uh, just one more point in that connection. Uh, there will be posies available, and during the service I'll be saying a prayer for the posies, but the posies will be available for collection after the service, Mothering Sunday, uh, in the porch. So if you'd like to come and collect a posy at some point following the service next Sunday, the posies will be available for you in the porch. Secondly, um, Sorry, excuse me. <coughs> um, need a glass of water. <coughs> Secondly, um, as you know, uh, we are now on a pathway towards, nationally speaking, um, towards the, the lifting of restrictions, uh, the lockdown restrictions, uh, which we hope uh, will be permanent rather than temporary. And having spoken with the ministry team and the church wardens uh, and uh, a risk assessment to be conducted, uh, we are proposing to open the church for public worship from Palm Sunday onwards. Now, for the Palm Sunday service and the Easter Sunday service, we are asking people to contact Zoe in order to book a slot. Uh, even though many people have now been vaccinated, and although the numbers uh, of those contracting COVID are uh, decreasing, praise God, nevertheless, we are still bound by social distancing restrictions. So um, if you would like to attend the Palm Sunday service and or the Easter Sunday service, you need to book your place uh, by contacting our assistant parish administrator, Zoe Bell. Um, very much in the way that we uh, operated for uh, the Christmas Day service. And it's my great hope that this will represent the beginning of the road towards the reestablishment of normal conduct of services uh, here at Berkswell. So Palm Sunday and Easter Sunday services will be services that you'll have to book for um, but thereafter, um, we hope to reestablish a uh, normal worship pattern, uh, normal worship uh, on Sunday at 10 o'clock. 
Thirdly, uh, and finally, uh, as I indicated last week, uh, Bill Court's funeral will be held tomorrow at 11.15 at Canley Crematorium. That service will be live streamed and the details for logging on to the live stream will have been sent to, to most of you uh, by way of a standard email sent by uh, Zoe and Janet. If you have not received that email with the log on details, then just indicate that fact in the chat box section of Facebook or by dropping Zoe an email and we will make sure that the details are sent out to you. So that is Bill Court's funeral service tomorrow at Canley, live streamed from 11.15. And so we come to the prayer of dismissal. Christ give you grace to grow in holiness, to deny yourselves, take up your cross and follow him. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.